this very worthy cause. And it was an enjoyable evening. It was nice to see so many local faces there and supporting it. And, uh, we hope that they're very successful in finding a, uh, finding a cure for this. It's a great, great undertaking. It's a massive undertaking. And, uh, a lot of people there. And a lot of people there. It was great. It's a great thing. We really enjoyed ourselves. That's all the chair has. So we do have some. Yeah, Mr. Pasquale. I think I'd like to commend the town for what they have done for the plow and stuff because I had an opportunity to go around and watch with my son. In town. So the second thing is, I got two power outages in Hickory Lane. The first one was out 14 hours. And while the oil burner guy was over doing some work, it went out again. And uh, I think we, they owe us some answers down there, the town. Because all I hear is some towers went out in Wakefield, etc. And uh, I guess why I'm saying that is because the state of California is in darkness tonight after they were assured it would never go out again. So what's the prognosis? of what they're going to fix down there to assure the community in North Reading that we're going to not have a situation where the sections of this town, not only my own, were out for innumerable hours and not knowing what the hell the status was. I was out for 43 hours, 44 hours straight. Oh, uh, that I was out yeah. for the same number of hours as the temperature was on the inside yeah, of the house when it finally came back on. <laughs> and, uh, so I didn't have to worry about anything spoiling the refrigerator. I just opened the door, let the cold air. But, um, first of all, I think Ready Municipal Light did a great job. Um, and again, as far as the, 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 the entire town went out for approximately 13 hours, and that was totally out of their control. It was the Boston Edison Towers, and it was a result of the storm. Uh, and it was Reading, not Reading, Wilmington, Andover, Wakefield. Wakefield. Uh, they all went out, <coughs> got us all back on as, as quickly as they could. Well, they should have had a lot that was out of, out of their control. Uh, the rest of it was just storm related damage. I mean, they had six, eight crews up here. Uh, from, Six o'clock, five o'clock in the morning on. And my power went out at five twenty. Uh, I happened to be up and I called as soon as it went out, <laughs> and, and didn't come back on until uh, midnight on Wednesday. Uh, again, yeah, I was in the, in the dark too. But I mean, I also knew that there were branches and I could see the wires that were down. And you know, I, mean, I, I rode around town during that time period, and I just saw a massive amount of damage. Uh, which is not within the control. I mean, what, what kind of an explanation would you like? How are we going to prevent well, it? Here's what I, I think like an engineer, okay? You know that. Oh, I know that. I know that. Right. When you hear that a tower went out, you've got to ask the question, did a tower topple yes, over? Yes, it toppled over. Well, well we yes. have a tower right behind the recycling center, so I want to have assurance that that's got the, the wind thing and everything, and that sucker doesn't go over, and then we get a power out of it. That's all I'm asking. It's simple. Yep. All, all, all of Reading Municipal Lights, towers and equipment withstood with the they storm other than the wires and the, <laughs> the, the wires on the street that the branches knocked out. And again, that was the, that's Boston Edison stuff. So. Yeah, okay. just, just drink, I mean, not even the storm. I mean, the, the reliability of their electricity as far as, I, I mean, I live on Elm Street. I, I bet you I set my clock yeah. three times a week, at least three times a week. I mean, we get little, not major power outages, just enough to upset every clock in the house. We lost the TV once. Um, I mean, I, we probably really can't do anything about them. Though. Well, I suggest it sounds like you're having power surgery. You should probably call them and have them. Yeah, they wanted to sell me a $250 power surge unit. How much was the TV? Uh, <laughs> uh, the TV. Uh, but I mean, yeah, but the thing is, you know, I, I lived in Medford for, what, 30 years. I think we lost power twice. One was in 1968 when everybody did. <laughs> I mean, I we, we lose power constantly, and it, it, is, it is erratic. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. I think it probably is, to answer the probably, I think it's probably a state question. I think it has to go further than just in the local community. I think that, that does have to be looked into maybe as far as, you know, the why is it so often? Because I heard in the background here when we talk about Medford, Medford doesn't have the street, not running does. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, I, I had asked the guy, when, after the, uh, the two knock telephone poles got knocked down next to my house, one on one side, one on the other, I asked the guy, I said, why don't you cut these trees down? I said, I said I'll let you cut my overhanging trees down. You know what they said to me? I went out in the tree cutting business. Well, they sure were. The other you know, and, 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 yeah, I mean, yeah. I guarantee when that, when that branch comes down, the whole Elm Street's going right out again. And then I offered them to let them do it, and they won't touch it. But I, I think the thing would be, it's a statewide 
thing that should be looked into as far as the reliability, because I, I would be a bit surprised if we're going to be in the same situation in California then pretty soon if, if, you know, if we don't have answers for our energy. It's not just California, throughout the country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Haas, is it? Yeah. Uh, I'm amazed that you said they, they're not in the tree business because probably a week before the storm, Reading Lake came, knocked on my door and said, can we cut the trees, the limbs, along the power line? I said, yeah, obviously they didn't do a good job, but I mean, they did come by to do it. Yeah, yeah, and then, then they moved my power line right after I had a bunch of trees taken down. I had a tree taken down specifically because it was taken down my power line, and they came by two years later and moved the pole and put my power line back under another hanging branch. I said, can you at least um, take those branches down and they'll come to we can't do that. So okay. it's, it's one of those situations uh, where, you know. I'm glad I brought up the brush. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <Okay. laughs> I'm glad I brought up the brush. Uh, bonfire at your house this year? Bonfire. I always have one. It's a great time. The whole neighborhood comes out. I even saved the I even I even I don't have to I saved my Christmas tree. I saved the Christmas tree. That's the, that ignites like that. Gets it going good. Uh, Executive session, we do have a couple of. Can yeah, I do my report first? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll make it, I'll make it brief. Um, first of all, uh, I just want to commend the police station building committee, uh, working with them on the design and selection. We have probably issued 18 RFPs out to various parties. They're due on March 28th at noontime. So hopefully, expeditiously, we'll have somebody on board to begin the work. So appreciate all the work they've done on that. Uh, 300 letters of accommodation I've received. Um, one is from Kyle Nelson, school business manager, thanking everybody from the Public Works Department for all the storm related functions and such. Great job. Uh, from Dot Pecos, uh, relating to the RAD course that was brought up last week. Uh, officers Girardi, Morrison, Dorsey, and Detective Murphy are all involved in it. Uh, she's very appreciative. I think they've done a great job and passed it on to the department also. And lastly, letter of recognition accommodation from Chief Pernell for Officers Morrison and Joseph Incanacio, um, that there was an armed robbery on February 6th in Stoneham, and the suspect came in North Reading, and these two officers apprehended him, and it's going to the records also, so thank you all. Uh, lastly, it was a request by the board of the Cable Advisory Committee to look at RCN for possibly coming into the town. They've been in touch with them. Uh, but they are not overly um, enamored with coming here at this point yet. They're looking into in their plans, but at this point, they don't have any plans to come into the into North Reading. But they will follow up with the uh, cable advisory committee. Good. 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 Motion to go to executive session for the purpose of Mr. Mr. Chin. I have it. Do you have it? Yeah, right here. Oh, go ahead, go on. Go on. Go on. Mr. Vino, you have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to enter the executive session for the purpose of discussing strategies with respect to collective bargaining and to consider the value of real property. And to return to open session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Sorry about that. The motion is seconded by Mr. Baker. Mr. Rowe, you vote. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Began. Mr. Vino. Aye. The chair votes aye. Thank you all very much. We will uh, come back. I will need two more minutes. Yeah. 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 Thank you for your attendance. Uh, Are you done? We consider, no, uh, we consider the price of the property. Oh, just fine, yeah. So you don't need to be on film anymore. Yeah. Show up in meeting one. Uh, <laughs> it's not an executive session. <laughs>